parents have spoken. The national blue agenda has been backslapped. And Let's Go Brandon is now more than just a chant. Yelled out across college football games and the topic of some top 10 songs. It's now been ensconced into history through a brutal election night handed to the Democrats, not only in just Virginia, but in several states and districts, in races both large and small, in groups of thousands and in groups of millions. You see, the left believes in a coalition, the same coalition that elected Barack Obama, that will never leave them, that will vote blue no matter what, and that the same gender and racial voting lines will always exist. Tuesday was a strong rebuke to that. You see, the right has the winning issues. We're winning on the fact that people are tired of COVID. They're tired of the shutdowns, and they're tired especially of the effect those shutdowns are having on kids' education. We're winning on parents' choice. Glenn Youngkin won the suburbs of Virginia, not because the women there decided that they were going to be Republicans, but because they care what's happening to their kids' school. They care what they're being taught. They care about what books their kids are reading, and they care about what views their teachers are pushing on their young, impressionable minds. Over the past year, the left has perfectly set themselves up as the party that wants to kill any bit of personal liberty, and the voters decided that they were not going to acquiesce to that tyranny. And the best part? The left refuses to admit what the problem is. When a truck driver beats the New York, New Jersey Senate president, spending either a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand dollars, depending on who you ask. And no, that's not a couple hundred thousand. You heard it right the first time. Your response should not be, and I quote, I have no idea what happened, end quote. But yes, continue to be confused. Continue to be perplexed. Continue to be flummoxed. Because the longer you refuse to admit that your anti-liberty policies are not what the American people want, the right's going to continue to win. And to the right, especially our elected officials. Do not fumble the ball. You have the path before you. You know how to win. And you have all of the momentum on our side. Push the initiative and do not fumble the football. Because if you do, we on the right should, you know, maybe pull a Coach Boone. Oh, did you fumble the football? I did, sir. All right. How many feet are in a mile? How many feet are in a mile? 5,280 feet. You pick this ball up, you run every one of them. You're killing me, Petey. You're killing me. You're killing me, Petey. Actually, you know, come to think of it, if all of our elected officials had to run a mile every year, counting off every step uh, by constitutional amendment, might not be the worst worst thing to happen. This is the Canceled Mission Show. Welcome. I'm your host, Gray Basford. Uh, we don't have anybody here tonight. And you know what? That is okay. We're going to have fun. It's going to be really relaxed. Uh, and I would really like if y'all put some questions in the uh, in, under this video. I can see them here. And I would love to answer some questions by the end of, at the end of the show. Um, really want that give and take. Uh, but on to the planned programming. So the biggest thing that happened this week in news is Glenn one Youngkin out of Virginia won uh, their governor's election. Uh, from the Daily Wire, the Republican Party dominated the blue state of Virginia where Democrat President Joe Biden won by 10 points just last year. A backlash builds to Biden's numerous crises and far-left Democrat policies. Again, this is the Daily Wire pulled straight from their uh, article. The biggest news of the night was that Republican gubernatorial candidate Glenn Youngkin defeated Democrat Terry McAuliffe. Funny story about that. I was actually in basic when uh, Ron DeSantis was running for governor uh, here in Florida. And I asked one of our drill sergeants who won the gubernatorial election in Florida. And she looked at me and goes, huh? Uh, but more on that later. Uh, Glenn Youngkin defeated Democrat Terry McAuliffe, who previously served at the, as the state's governor with numerous publications calling the race during the early morning hours on Wednesday. Youngkin focused heavily on education and problems with local school boards during his campaign. Yes, we talked a lot about those, and it was good that he did, because uh, it obviously struck a chord, as we're going to see. Since Virginia went blue for Barack Obama in 2008, Republicans have been on a downhill slide, the pace of which quickened during President Donald Trump's administration. 
the Associated Press reported, the GOP, which hasn't won a statewide race in Virginia since 2009, saw its legislative majority melt away. And Washerman, who is a uh, who is a uh, head of editing for maybe Politico, I, I didn't put it in here, uh, weighed in on the situation involving the House of Delegates, writing, as if tonight couldn't get worse for Dems, Republicans appear to have taken control of the, control of the Virginia House of Delegates by a single seat. Um, there have been a lot of dunking on, on, on Democrats by many people that this has happened. Um, hi, my name is Gray. I'm going to join in on the dunking, but they should because their, their policies are terrible. Not just at the top. It's, it's awful at the top, but on down. I, it, it blows my mind that they continue through this. Once Glenn Youngkin started pulling close, he was he was never supposed to be anywhere close in this race. And once he started, uh, once he started pulling in close, that should have clued him in that maybe they're not doing a good job. Maybe they're not hitting the issues. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't go into a a debate and say parents shouldn't have, uh, parents should not have the right to know what their kids are being taught or have any say in their school. And if you do do that, maybe you walk it back. Uh, something that the McAuliffe uh, campaign decided that they just didn't want to do. So I, I guess kudos on them for standing firm in what they believe in, even if it's wrong and uh, and, and, and people deserve better. Uh, honestly, this should not just be a dunk contest. As fun as it is, as awesome as it is to see the supercuts of all of the leftist political pundits blowing their minds trying to come up with any reason uh except that they had terrible policies they ran a candidate who i assume used to be good i'll be honest with you back when he was the virginia governor before i really didn't pay any attention to terry mcauliffe uh he might have been great i mean he had to be to be the head of the dnc um but it's not well ran but like I said, this should be more than just a dunk contest. We should learn some lessons from the great from this great news. One of these is that when you mess with a kid, uh, moms go real quickly from blue to red. When you mess with their education, apparently moms run to the right and uh, exactly where they should run when they want more parental rights. So uh, coming up, we have actual quotes from mothers about why they voted for a young kid. And these are non-Republican suburban moms. Now, just as a side note, I don't normally like using anecdotal evidence um, on here. I try to use statistical evidence, but as, as much as possible. But the fact that Glenn Young can won, I think, uh, makes it a perfect time to meld the two together. So, also from the Daily Wire, can you see where I aggregate a lot of my stuff from? Uh, and also from ABC News for this particular uh, stat. Youngkin won 53 to 47 in the suburbs, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, except for last year, just last year, Joe Biden won the suburbs 53 to 45. It switched uh, between the two parties in just a year. That just goes to show how, how much the blue agenda is awful. It's awful. Um, and yes, a large reason Youngkin won was because he struck a chord with suburban woman. So from, from the Daily Wire, a group of non... This is a... Uh, I believe it was a CBS article that they aggregated this from. Uh, a group of non-Republican women, uh, suburban moms told CNN, it was CNN, during a segment that aired on Saturday night that they voted for Republican Glenn Youngkin instead of Democrat candidate Terry McAuliffe in last week's elections in Virginia. Uh, this is from a woman named Kay Greenwell. Well, parents were very angry during school closures on the teachers' union. And for me, the nail in the coffin was on McAuliffe's last day of campaigning. He brought the head of the teachers' union to his rally, and she spoke, and it was like someone just poked me right in the eye and said, you think you want to have a say in your education? Well, you're not going to. This goes back directly to what he said at that debate, where parents should not have a say in what their kids learn, should not have a say on what they teach. Um that was that was uh, that was the downfall. That was the very start. It was at that mo it was at that the next day, I believe, that Glenn Youngkin started uh, making up ground in the polls. And you th you think 
with him being the former head of the DNC, he might have a little bit of political acumen to know that, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't keep pushing this. And apparently you'd be run along because this, this happened on the last day before the election. This happened. Uh, another woman, and I'm, I hope I don't mess this name up. Uh, Shwana Yashar, spelled S-H-A-W-N-N-A-Y-A-S-H-A-R. So if I mess that up, let me know. We think our kids are in crisis. The learning loss is real. We're in a situation where our kids are really far behind and they need a lot of help. They need a lot of additional tutoring. They need a lot of additional time after school to help catch them up, and they're still not focusing on that. It's like a situation where you're in front of your house, and the driveway is really dirty, but the house is also on fire, and you're using the hose to hose off the driveway instead of putting out the fire on the house. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems right. That seems like that's happening in more than just Virginia. That seems anywhere where... Uh, where state leadership is saying, no, we're not going to help with the kids. We're not going to get them back in. We're not going to get them learning. I mean, <laughs> you look at the facts. I'm, I'm very, con very considering looking up the New York Times facts right now, but we did just a few weeks ago. This thing does not hurt kids who aren't all one. It just, it really doesn't Two, even if you have uh, comorbidity factors in kids, it, it very rarely, it very rarely goes after them. Uh, what is it, like 700 kids below the age of 18 in a group of 73 million? Something like that. And, and even then, just a few weeks ago, the John Hopkins University came out with a study that showed 10 to 20, 10 to 20 out of 700, 10 to 20 out of 700, out of 73 million, died with no cor comorbidity factors. And I am not here to say that that's not terrible, because it is. Of course it is. But like I said, statistical evidence shows your kids are not in danger from this. So maybe it's time to get back in school. Maybe it's time to let them grow and learn. Take off the mask because they're not useful for kids anyway. Kids don't know how to wear a mask correctly. It does nothing to slow the spread with kids. Let them grow and learn psychologically because they need that face-to-face -face interaction. And, and, and let them learn the material instead of in, instead of keeping them away from it because I mean the more you do it the more you're going to get this so as terrible as it is for the kids hopefully we'll use this you know momentum to elect good solid conservatives who are for opening up kid open up schools good education etc 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 I went over it uh one more Dana Jackson I felt like it was really tone deaf to just discount parents in the whole education struggle and to make it about Trump all the time I mean there's a place for that but McAuliffe never really talked about what he was going to do to improve things he just turned talked about how bad everyone else was and that he was a real turnoff especially leaving our kids in the dust and it goes to show that party lines are not are not you know destiny I mean these are Democrats saying this about a someone who used to be their governor So yeah, maybe take a note, and, and Republicans, take a note on how Youngkin won. He didn't focus on Trump. He didn't try to be Trump. He tried to stay focused on the issues, and he did. And another thought about this um, that I just I thought, is there something about, about these moms protecting their kids? Don't get me wrong. Dads do have a responsibility to protect their wife, their kids, and I'm certainly not, just, I'm certainly not saying this to you know, try to give them cover to shark it. But a mother's love is just so incredible and beautiful. I mean, the zeal in which Mama Bear will protect her kids. You hear it in these three. You see it in the election uh, statistics. Mothers came to the defense of their kids. When they said, you have no say in their education, mother said, oh, yes, we do. And it's, 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 a mother's love is just a really beautiful thing. I mean, it's sad that leftists are trying to take the femininity away from women. So don't get me wrong, the zeal, the empathy, and the fire mothers have for their children is very much a feminine aspect of humanity. Uh, men love their kids, no, don't get me wrong, uh, and, it's, and it's different, but the protection that they, they showed this election, it's, it's really a beautiful thing. Uh, and it's a shame that the left is trying to kill this femininity and telling mothers that it's okay to kill their babies. Uh, I'm just going to throw that in there. I digress. So another bright spot in the... In the in, in, um, 
in this GOP lit up election is who won the lieutenant governor race uh, in Virginia because they don't run as a ticket. You have to win. You know, a, a Republican could win the uh, governor race. A Democrat could win the lieutenant governor. Uh, so both were taken by Republicans and as well as the attorney general. But um, it's won by a lady named Wins- Winson- Winsome she- Sears. We'll say her name right. Winsome Sears. Uh, and I've never heard this name. I guarantee you most nobody has heard, uh, heard this name before, but she, let me, let me just read some of her bio. Um, let's see. Winsome Earl Sears, born March 11th, 1964, is an American politician, veteran, and businesswoman who's the lieutenant governor-elect of Virginia. A Republican Sears served in the Virginia House of Delegates from 2002 to 2004. Uh, but her story is amazing. Her, she was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and immigrated to the United States at the age of six. Her father uh, arrived with just $1.75 a few years before that and took any job he could find while also continuing up, uh, continuing his education. She grew up in the Bronx uh, and served as an electrician in the United States Marines. Now, I'll be the first person to make fun of Marines uh, as, as someone in the Army, uh, just poking good fun. Um. But yeah, this this lady this lady's awesome. Uh, from best I can tell. Uh, let's see. So before running for public office, Sears ran a homeless shelter. Ran uh, in November first, two thousand one. Sears upset a twenty year Democratic incumbent uh, while running for the ninetieth district seat, and she was the first Jamaican female in the uh, Republican first. First Jamaican female Republican, first female veteran, and first naturalized citizen delegate to serve in the House of Delegates of Virginia. Um, and I actually have a little bit of her acceptance speech here. The whole video, if you if you pull it up on YouTube, it's about eight and a half minutes. It's it's really good. She's engaging. Uh, she's fun as a speaker. Um, but yeah, let me just play. I have a little bit. A little bit. Uh, we can play. Is the American dream, the American dream. When my father came to this country, August 11th of 1963, he came at the height of the civil rights movement from Jamaica. He came and I said to him, but it was such a bad time for us, why did you come? And he said, because America was where the jobs and the opportunities were. And he only came with a dollar seventy-five. One dollar and seventy-five cents. Took any job he could find and he put himself through school and started his American dream. And then, yes, and now he's comfortably retired. And then he came and got me when I was six years old. And when I stepped on that Pan Am Boeing 737, and landed at JFK, I landed in a new world. So yeah, uh, that whole video, it's actually really awesome. I think I watched it twice the first time uh, I, I looked it up. And and their story is, is a story of what American America can be. So I, I, I wrote down my thoughts on this, and I, and I said, you know, this type of politician we need moving forward, a diverse but uh, emeritus, a meritocratus. She has merit. She's skilled. It's not just she was thrown in there because they wanted uh, a black lady on the, on the ticket. It was, I mean, as you can tell, she and her family have built themselves up from nothing. Um, and they realized that that, that while America hasn't always been the best it could be, it has since its founding been the best there is. The gold star, and there is plenty of room for growth. I mean, we, for all our problems, we are a land of opportunity unlike any on earth. Only a quick jaunt to most anywhere on earth, and for the most part, except for the very best that country has to offer, at best, that country looks like Detroit. It does. I've been there. We need more politicians who understand that and know that the only path we have is forward. I, I say that because I've only really been to one other country. Um, 
and that's I, I think I believe I've talked about it before is Albania. And when you get to the very center of their capital city, you see what might what what, what could pass in a small uh, city in America. It's nice. It's clean. Um, people are walking around. Once you get more than a few miles out of there, they have traffic laws in the very center. Other than that, um, it's I, I know I digress, but I have time. It's 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 funny riding around there and and driving around there because we had to have a, a, a police escort because uh, we went over there with the National Guard and the way police do traffic over there is they'll go in front of you and they have no laws and they have no lanes just people weaving in and out and uh, they'll actually one guy will be driving the other guy will stick his head out the window and has this weird paddle with like a red blinker on it he'll go ah, stay back and uh, yeah you get a good laugh but outside of that very center it's terrible there's places that to keep people from climbing the walls and going into their Oh. Okay. Apparently uh had a little bit of technical difficulty there. Cool. Uh so I'll just keep going, I guess. Um They'll have pieces of glass coming up of the walls that encircle. Like so in Albania they're very their wealth is in their house. They build on top extra layers for every like level of the um every level of new family that every generation that comes in and uh there was a small cafe on the base on the little base is a kind word uh they were the coolest people but on the last day that we were supposed to leave i was talking with the son the son's owner owner's son and uh, I was asking him, sir, how are you doing? He said, I'm not ready for y'all to leave because they'd made enough money for like the next five years. Um, and, and that's what it's like over there. Uh, so when people say America's not great, don't listen to them. It's don't listen. They've probably never seen what bad is. So I'm glad to report that Virginia is not the only state that Republicans had a fantastic showing in. New Jersey, yes, that deep blue liberal northeastern state had their own spat of surprises. Uh, from not to be, something's happening, folks. Yesterday we ran an article about state Senate candidate Edward Durr and how he almost unseated the top lawmaker in New Jersey, a deep blue state. So he was running for uh, governor. No, he wasn't. He was running for Senate. I apologize. Uh, it turns out he actually won. New, uh, New Jersey truck driver turned Republican state Senate nominee Edward Durr has officially beat out Democratic state Senate President Steve Sweeney in the race for Sweeney's state Senate seat. And that's just the beginning. Durr beat Sweeney in the third district seat 52 to 48 percent, according to the New York Times. Sweeney had led the state Senate since 2010. So this guy has been an 11-year state Senate president, uh, and he'd been in since 2002, I believe. When he defended his seat back in 2017, he reportedly spent nearly $20 million on what has since become one of the most expensive legislative races in the country. Uh, this is the best part, though, because that's whatever. That's cool. That's good. This is the best part. Durr reportedly spent just $153 on his election campaign, with 67 of that going to Dunkin' Donuts. Now, a little bit later on, uh, there's another figure, two thousand dollars. But still, he spent twenty million in 2017. I assume he spent a, a good deal this Senate or this election, and this dude spends one hundred and fifty-three dollars to roughly two thousand and beats him. Uh, so from the Daily Wire, Daily Wire, Republican drive, truck driver beats New Jersey's most powerful Democratic lawmaker after only spending a few thousand dollars. Politico, which referred to Sweeney as New Jersey's most powerful lawmaker, said that Durr's upset win dealt a severe blow to Democrats. As Sweeney was their most effective political machine, Montclair State University political science professor Bridget Harrison said that Durr's upset victory was, in part, an indicator that even blue states are rejecting pre uh, Democratic President Joe Biden and his far-left agenda. Yes. If you've been out, unless you are, I don't know, staying in an echo chamber with the people you're around... Yes, there's plenty of people who are upset about Joe, President Joe Biden's uh, far-left agenda and as well as just the national blue far-left agenda. Um, and this is what happens. This is what happens when you push a terrible, terrible uh, uh, agenda and uh, policy. 
Republicans in blue-collar districts turned out heavily to vote for Republicans during Tuesday's election. Now, this is it. Senate Minority Leader Loretta Weinberg responded to the upset by saying in an interview, it is stunning and shocking, and I cannot figure it out. I love this. Of course you can't figure it out, because then you'd have to go against the leader of your party, and that would work well for you, right? I mean, at this point, it might, it might be good to distance yourself. Uh, stunning and shocking, though. I mean, yes, absolutely, in the more, most glorious way. The fact that she cannot figure it out just goes to show how far the left has their heads up their rear ends. The right, we may not have quite expected to turn out this well, but we can definitely see how terrible nationwide politics uh, policies coming from the White House as well from Capitol Hill lead to this. The worst 10 states for re- economic recovery are all blue. New Jersey is one of those, along with New, New York. Um, and these are the states uh, with still strict COVID mandates. Uh, blue, it seems people are sick and tired of being blue. I can't blame them. I, I, I really can't. Uh, let's see, Durr, who previously ran for office a couple of years ago, said that he was motivated to run against... I love this. Said he was motivated to run against Sweeney this year after he was denied a concealed carry permit. You, my man, I like you. I'd vote for you. Uh, he said, I was told flat out by the local sheriff, don't even bother. And that kind of angered me, said Durr. I've never been arrested, and I couldn't get a concealed carry. That really angered me, so I looked into what, what can you do to get into politics. Like I said, I love this is why he ran. You won't let me carry my lawful and constitutional weapon? Fine. I will peacefully topple your 19-year reign in state politics. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Um, another, another big deal coming out of New Jersey is that New, York, uh, New Jersey Republican gubernatorial, gubernatorial candidate Jack... Mm, Catarelli? Ka, Ka, We'll say that. Italian names kind of are hard. Came within just a couple of points of knocking off the state's incumbent Democratic Governor Phil Murphy in a state that Biden uh, won nearly 16 points just yet last year. And I got to say, a skew of almost 16, 16 points in a year in a hard blue state. I was thinking about it earlier. I think Joe Biden is the greatest thing to happen to the Republican Party maybe ever. And I get it. I hear, you, I hear you screaming into your screen now. How can I say this? Um, but really, let's think about it. Joe Biden's, let me say this very carefully for legal reasons, so I'm not actively criticizing him. I'm just saying what other people are feeling. The fact that more and more people are pitting themselves against his actions and policies is probably the best thing for the GOP. That's an obvious one. My thing is, if you subscribe to the theory that history is like a pendulum, that it's, it swings back and forth between power bases, then you probably agree with me that Donald Trump gave the pendulum, pendulum a hard push back to the left. Now, he came in strong when it was sweeping to the right, but I think he gave a strong push back to the left after he had won um, and didn't calm down just a little bit. Uh, but that's nothing to what Joe Biden seems to be doing. It, it seems like he's trying to pull it with all of his might, with all of the policies and all just not quitting uh even when his policies are 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 really just unpopular uh and he seems to be pulling like pulling that pendulum and it seems like it's 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 like there's a a a spring right there that he's just pulling it back against and when he lets it go at least i'm hoping that it rockets back to the right and stays that way for a little while but i'm sure republicans will find a way to volley it back before it would naturally swing back to the left anyway. So it may be for nothing, but there we go. That's my thesis on why Joe Biden's the best thing for the uh, grand old party in a long time. Anyway, back to the voting racial lines I mentioned at the top of the show. So Texas district, by the way, if you're watching, all three of you, all three of you, if you get friends on, that'd be nice. Um, Ask some questions. I'd love to answer them. It'd be fun. Try and try and test te- test me to see what I can and can't answer. It'd be fun. Uh, back to this. Texas district, roughly 75% Hispanic, turns red for GOP. On Tuesday night, in what might be a harbinger of things to come, the GOP turned a state house district that is roughly 75% Hispanic from blue to red. As GOP House candidate John Le- 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 Lewan won the seat in Texas's 118th House Representative District. According to the 25 to 2019 American Community Survey, 
Uh, with the analysis by Texas Legislative Council Research Division, the 18th district was roughly 73.4% Hispanic. And this is important. This isn't just a random story. I, I, I pulled out uh, pulled out just to throw in time here. It's, it's really important because the traditional wisdom basically says the, the, the more uh, the more Hispanic, the more Latino your district is, the more it's going to uh, vote Democrat. It's going to vote blue. Uh, that's why in a lot of ways the Democratic Party doesn't want to ever shut off the southern border because they can bring in a voter base. Um, but Maybe the traditional wisdom in this instant isn't 100% correct. Uh, according to a report in the Texas Monthly, Democrats who have been hoping to turn the state of Texas blue are facing the stark realization that the Hispanic vote they seemingly take for granted is far more conservative than they are willing to admit. Probably because we talked about uh, they're coming from one of those places I talked about earlier where they realize that mm, maybe maybe America is good for a reason. And... And maybe we don't want to turn it into where we came from. I don't know. Kind of. The Texas <laughs> Monthly noted, last year, McAllen uh, experienced the biggest shift in party share towards Donald Trump of any large city in this country, say for Laredo, 150 miles to the northwest. In both border towns, Trump improved on his 2016 results by more than 23 points. No area fled further to the GOP camp than South Texas, where 18% of the state's Hispanic population lives. In Starr County, just upriver from McAllen, Republicans increased their turnout by almost 300% uh, between 2016 and, and 2020. Uh, the Texas Monthly adds, while Hillary Clinton won there by 60 points, Joe Biden barely scraped out to a five-point victory in Webb County, home of Laredo. Trump cut his 2016 margin of defeat by more than half, and in uh, Zapata County, which didn't have, even have a local Republican Party. Trump became the first GOP candidate to win since Warren G. Harden was on the ballot a century ago. It just goes to show that that uh, just, it doesn't matter your racial ethnicity. Freedom is a universal yearning, and with, with the Blue uh, Party uh, actively trying to cut away against it, people are seeing it. People are waking up to it. People that you wouldn't think would wake up to it uh, just because traditionally that's how they voted. They're waking up to it. And I don't think it's just from the very head of the Democratic Party. I think you see stuff like this all the way on down. I mean, the past three weeks I've been hitting hard on localities that are doing terrible things to their kids in the name of transgenderism, in the name of COVID, in the name of, of inclusivity, so to speak. Um. And yes, this at the low level is turning people against them. It, it won't turn everybody, but it's not just at the top. People are saying, I don't like the top and on down. It, it flows on down like that. Some of it is coming from the ground up, and that's because they keep doing these really, really dumb things I've talked about for the last three weeks and, and who my friends on here have talked about. Um, and they probably... I don't know if they're going to learn from their lessons. I hope. Okay. For the kids, I hope they do. I, I really do. And I think best case scenario, I hope they learn. I hope they stop. And I hope people remember that they're still terrible people. Um, I deem that not likely to happen. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I deem that not likely to happen. Uh, a little bit more likely is that they stop, people forget they're terrible, and 10 years from now they, they push all these things again, reheated in some way. Um, but I'm really hoping, my, my best case scenario is people of course remember uh, what these people did to their kids. And they say, nope, not again, get out of here, you pervert, you're a terrible person, why are you taking kids to a gay bar? Why are you letting students lap dance in male students lap dance and lingerie you know why are you in the name of trans inclusivity allowing males into the female bathroom and letting them rape them and instead of you know maybe do it taking a couple of simple steps to keep uh keep this student from doing it again you're going to just going to send him to another school and he does it again so there's my tangent for right now um yeah i don't i don't i don't 
I hope the last one happens and say, get out of here, and they're banned from polite company for the rest of their terrible days. Uh, and then, of course, I hope they see the light. I, I really do. I hope they get taken out from their positions of power, and then I hope they see the light after that. Because there are consequences for actions. So on to a, just a, a, a fun, fun little story I found. 19-year-old running for school board trounces a uh, member who helped ruin his school year. This is, this is just a fun one I saw, and this was filler that I put in. But it's, it's a cool story. So this is also in New Jersey, by the way. Nicholas Seppi, a 19-year-old high school graduate whose senior year was heavily disrupted by a school's COVID-19 policies. There you go. There's, there's the term we're looking for. Decided to run against one of the school board members responsible, and he won. So the College Fix reported that Seppi, who graduated from Egg Harbor Town high, Township High School in New Jersey last year, defeated Ter Alabarda on the Township School Board by an overwhelming 17-point margin. So to have... I, you know, that might be that might be a, a, a plus to this Alabarda. I mean, someone came from the school and, and ran really well and beat him by 17 points, so he must be doing something right education-wise. Uh, no, it's probably because he's terrible. Um, Seppi did not respond to a request from a comment from the Daily Wire, but he did tell the fix in a statement that the school shutdowns that disrupted his senior years were awful, motivating, to him, to, motivating him to run out of a desire to serve his community and give parents a voice in the district. And you know what? Based on that, I'd vote for him. I'd vote. I'm, I'm putting it right now. I'd vote for him. Go, Seppi. I will cheer you on. I'll put one of your signs out in my, you know, two by two square here at my apartment. Um, just on the fact that you want to give parents a voice in the district, you can't. You can't be that bad if that's one of your goals. Seppi told the outlet that as a school board member, he wants to expand civics education and increase vocational training opportunities for the township students. There we go. That's another one. I, I, you got my vote. You've convinced me. I'd vote for you, but that's voter fraud. And yeah, um, maybe maybe we shouldn't commit voter fraud after twenty twenty election. Anyway, Seppi told out. Uh, let's see. Opportunities for the township students. According to the outlet, the fixed report that Seppi's election platform also focuses on pledging to represent the students' best interests as well. Hopefully, the best interest the students' best interest is to say, hey. Your parents, uh, they get a say in what happens to you. There, I'm Cody. So all I can... There, I'm Cody. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, all I can really say is good on this kid for showing up. I don't know his politics, although they seem to be on the right side. Um, so I'm not going to comment on that too much. But I will say that he saw a problem inside to step in. Let's hope he does a good job. Of, of course. Uh, the kid needs and deserves great leadership. The kids at the school need and deserve great leadership who is fighting for truly better education for their best interests and not the interest of the leftist cult. So yes to parents, no to the leftist cult who wants to push all these radical ideology on, on you. So good on Seppi. Uh, let's hope he turns out to uh, not be someone who just went after it because, but because he really truly wants to make their lives better. Um, and on to the future election. So, most political pundits say there's going to be a red tide that sweeps across the country in 2022. The the uh, House could swing by as much as 40 seats. And honestly, if Republicans don't take back the House and the Senate again, you're 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 killing me, Petey. Uh, but that should happen. Uh, but what about here in Florida? Well, I, I, I love this. This is great. On the verge of being unstoppable, Democratic Governors Association abandons Florida 2022 to DeSantis, report says. Yes, keep your money and your politics out of Florida. Say Florida GOP Governor Ron DeSantis, who won a razor-thin 40,000 vote victory against Democrat Andrew Gillum in 2018, has now become such a formidable political leader that the Democratic Governors Association will not give any significant financial aid to any Democrat opposing his re-election in 2022, according to the report in Politico. We did it! We did it! We, he's such a popular leader, they're not even going to try. I love this. Oh, this is this is great. I, this, is the, this is the momentum. This is why I say we have the momentum. We cannot fumble the football. Um, 
actually kind of an embarrassing story here. Like I said earlier, I, I actually did not vote for DeSantis in, uh, in the 2018 election. I was in day two of basic training, like I said, and like an idiot, I didn't fill out an absentee ballot. Uh, definitely not making that mistake again, uh, but it did lead to a, a, a pretty pretty great story about when Jill Siren told us who won. Um, she had a lazy eye, and so me and my friend didn't know who she was talking to when she came over. It was really funny. Uh, you had to be there, though. Let's see. The Democratic Governor Association has no plans to give significant financial help to Florida Democrats as they seek to unseat Governor Ron DeSantis in 2022, a major setback that will make it harder for challengers to take on the popular Republican. Okay, cool. The DGA, which spent more than $15 million in Florida over the past two gubernatorial election cycles, is starting to deprioritize the state and is expected to have a much smaller footprint during the midterm, said two Florida Democratic consultants who have been in contact with the DGA. Um... Yeah, well, I mean, Ron DeSantis 2024, he just he just keeps winning. He, yeah, he, he keeps winning. After noting the two recent closes, close races for governor of Florida, the 2014 election where the GOP's Rick Scott defeated Democrat Charlie Crist in, by one point, and DeSantis's narrow victory in 2018, Politico stated, though those races were close, there has long been a sinking feeling among Florida Democrats that DeSantis is on the verge of being unstoppable. I'm okay with that. Carry that momentum forward. Go. Go, my friend. No, well, not my friend, but go, my state commander-in-chief. There we go. That's, yes. On to victory. Ed Morrissey of Hot Air commented, by abandoning Florida now, the DGA and Democratic Party establishment is all but conceding to race to DeSantis. And in doing that, emphasis in the article, they're making DeSantis all the more formidable as a potential presidential general election. Yes. Yes. This is a very, very big concession by the DGA and Democrats, especially if DeSantis wins the GOP nomination in 2024, which makes this a little bit more likely to. So, you know, he comes out with a huge lead in, in Florida next year. Like, he just just keep, keep the momentum going. This is DeSantis' own words, and this is, again, one of the reasons why I definitely want him to win. I think people are rebelling against what the Democratic Party stands for nowadays the never-ending mandates and restrictions because of COVID, using our school system for leftist indoctrination rather than high-quality education, and then the biting regime failures from Afghanistan to the southern border, gas prices, inflation, supply chain. And I do think this wave is building. I think it was a strong last night, but I think it's going to keep building all the way into 2022. If you go back to the 2010 wave that Republicans had, I think there's more dissatisfaction with what's going on in D.C. today than there was at the time of that election cycle. And that is good news for Republicans, and that is bad news for Joe Biden and his regime. Um, again, this is why, because he hits... And this is, the, this is the GOP winning strategy right here. It's... We win the issues. We really do. With parents, like I said at the big top of the show, we win the issues. And I, I really don't think there's denying that. Parents are with us on the issues. This These past elections... Um, go to prove that um i mean it's, it's stuff that's affecting the everyday family maybe not afghanistan although i think there's a lot of people that hear stories that are coming out of afghanistan and it's terrible uh also the fact that we left all of those people over there um let's see gas prices inflation supply chain issues every single one of those is going to affect americans especially going into the fourth quarter which is christmas um so yeah, he's hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's the, the the good thing about this election and the one coming up is that the issues are not hard to find. They are right there. People can see. I can see them. People can see them, and it's affecting them. Uh, Republican lobbyist Nick L uh, Larosi uh, said, "This guy is running like he's ten points behind. Uh, he's not going to let off the gas. You shouldn't. You see in sports. You see in war." Once you are on the offensive, once you have the initiative, you do not let off the gas. You do not give up. And he's doing good. So uh, DeSantis 2024, I really hope he doesn't do something between now and then to make me regret saying it all these times. Uh, but he is a politician, so, you know, take it with a grain of sand. So this has been an unusual, unusual, um, this has been an unusual episode for me because usually I'm talking about things that have made me really mad, really upset. And here, there's this is the story dominating. I mean, there's some other stuff, but 
this is the story dominating right now. And it's just, it's, it's really good for, for conservatives or at least Republicans. Um, so I got to bring you back down to earth. Let me, let me finish by leaving you, bringing you back down to earth. Um, I've got a TikTok for you. It's probably going to make you cry. That's okay. It's in this case, it's okay to let out a few, uh, manly tears for you men and, and for those ladies, if you just want to break down, I, I don't blame you. Uh, so here it is. I'm just going to play it and then a couple last thoughts uh, before we're done for the night. The pronouns E, M, er, er, or Z, Zen, Zer, Zer, or really any neo pronouns that aren't Z, her, hers. I am a white, transmasculine, femme, non binary, temporarily mostly able bodied, neurodivergent, obsessive, compulsive, chronically ill, culturally Jewish, Unitarian Universalist, non monogamous, demi low romantic, gray demi bisexual, survivor of acute and complex trauma, millennial, and cat parent in mental health recovery. I think about it sometimes. Maybe like. An asteroid isn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where do we start with that? I've, I've watched this probably 17, 18, 20 times in preparation for this. I really don't know where to start it, except uh, right here. Right, right here. Uh, I am offended that you would use my name for such lunacy, okay? I am offended by that, and you should take that down. I should report you for that because words hurt, okay? Words hurt. I think she got it right on the head when she said uh, recovering mental health. Uh, no, you're not recovering. No, I, I, I'm looking at this right here. You're not recovering. If you, have all of, if you took the time to write all of that down and you believe that about yourself, you are not recovering. Um, go back. Uh, cause, cause, cause that's, <laughs> there, these people, these people vote guys, which is why you have to go out and you have to go vote to cancel out people who, um, whether by choice or whether they feel like they have to be like this. And whether they believe the lie, you need to go out so that people like this don't win. Because if people like this win, then where does the madness stop? That's it for tonight, guys. I am so happy that I could come and, and talk to you. Uh, just just us two, whoever watching this, me and you, we, we had a conversation here uh, for the past almost 50 minutes. I think uh, this was a fun episode. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, so if you liked it, like, subscribe on my YouTube channel, which is Cancel Misfits. This should be up tomorrow. Uh, share from here, share from there. We're... There's just so much that needs to be said, and I'm so thankful every time someone shares it because I can say that I, I can say that I did something. I want to do more, and the more you share it, the more people who view it, the more people who react to it, who 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 write down comments. It's more. It's it, I can do more, and I want to be there. I think. I, I think morally I have to say I have to be the one taking the hard line because, I mean, I, I, I don't have much to lose right now. Um, so I, I think I should be saying something. I, and we should always speak up. We all have a, a duty to speak up, but it's so important that people talk about this. It's so important that maybe not this. This was, this was a special episode just because we needed some good news. But it's just so important. So, you know, go out. Don't let them cancel you. It's my job. Just send them to me. They can, they can try to cancel me. Y'all have a wonderful week. Um, I love you all. Get in the Thanksgiving spirit because it's Thanksgiving, not Christmas yet. All right, guys. Have a good one.